Next session, find your seat and stay there. Ephesians 2, 4 to 7. God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us. Everyone say great love. love. That's God. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. This is going back to what I shared before, but when were you made alive? When you were dead in your trespasses. That's great love. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that, I want you to note that word, so that, but you're raised up, you're seated with him so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his kindness toward us. One of the great mysteries of the faith is that though I walk the earth right now, I am seated in heaven. I am no longer merely human. I am reborn as a new species. Adam started one race. The second Adam started another. So when it says I'm raised up with him, that's a resurrection statement. As Christ died and we died with Christ, we were raised with him in newness of life. The Jesus that came out of the tomb after three days was not the Jesus that went into the tomb. The Jesus that came out of the tomb walked through walls and was unrecognizable by his own disciples. He was a new species of humanity. And here's the great mystery. There is a Jewish man right now seated at the right hand of God. See, we kind of have this idea that because Jesus went up in the clouds, he floated back into spirit. Spirit life. No, he is forever a human. And this is part of the bridge that's been built for you and I to an eternal quality of spiritual life. There was no human in heaven because no man could see God and live. So God raised a new kind of man who was his own son in the spirit but he clothed him with flesh. He lived under the law, died as a man, came out of the grave as a new kind of God-man, fully God, fully man, and forever fully God, fully man. The spirit realm is occupied right now in all of that divine splendor that Ezekiel saw, But there's one like the Son of Man who is actually there as a man now. What Ezekiel saw as a prophecy is now the literal quality of a human form existing, breathing the air of the Spirit. I don't know what that's like. Is there oxygen there? I don't know what it's like, but Jesus didn't lose his humanity to take his seat at the Father's side. He's fully God and fully man for all time. Part of the glory of redemption is we will always see the scars. God took upon himself eternal, the eternal limitations of a human body, except the, there are no limitations on a resurrected body, except that he will always wear those scars. And he is our representative, our Melchizedek, our high priest, who in his resurrection carried his own blood into the temple of heaven When it says he ever lives to make intercession, that's not Jesus there going, oh God, forgive Bob. Oh God, forgive Tom. Oh God, forgive Jesse. Oh God, forgive Kelly. Seven billion times a day, he's working through everybody praying for you. And then the next day he starts over because he ever lives to intercession. No, his presence, his blood, his eternal existence before God is his intercession. And we've been raised with him into that so that his position is now as a human making room for us to be in him because he is in us. And that union is so complete. What's it say about a husband and a wife? They become one flesh. But this mystery is great. We're really talking about Christ in the church. So his flesh is is a bridge for our flesh and his spirit is a bridge for our spirit. And if he's in you, that means you're in him. So wherever you are right now, you aren't just here. 
And when we get a revelation of that, we have to hold on to it. Take your seat and stay seated. You're raised in resurrection power. What a powerful joining word it is to say, raised us up with him. We are included, not tangential to his victory, to such a degree that it is as if we ourselves won it. See, he's not selfish in his victory. He's not like, well, I did all this, but you guys make sure you stay in second place. No, he wants you to think out of such a union with him that you begin to realize what he won for you is so completely yours, it's as if you won it, except that the humility of receiving it from him means you'll never claim it as your own, but you can live with the confidence of it as if it was yours because you've been raised up with him. Not only in death, but also in resurrection. Christ became us, thus we are with him still. And in what manner are we with him? We're seated. Here again, we have the position of rest, not striving. Our spirit exists in the place of dominion and peace that belongs uniquely to Christ on his throne of glory. We are seated because he is seated, Ephesians 1.20. We have dominion because he has dominion, Ephesians 1.21. Here we're in Ephesians 2, 4 to 7. The, if the facts of our life do not line up with that position of his dominion, we have to press through the clutter of our soul until we recapture the truth that we are not limited by where we are now, here, and now. You are sitting here and you might think, I did this, 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 and this wrong just 10 minutes before showing up at the meeting. My wife and I got in a fight. I actually told my accountant to ignore that one thing, which means I'm going to cheat on my income taxes. I kicked my dog, and I might have said a cuss word. Okay, so you're working it out, right? You got some issues. There's a process of sanctification still at work. What hasn't happened is... You didn't get the boot out of heavenly places. You in your mess are still seated with him in his glory. Now, how are you going to do? What are you going to do with that? Are you going to just kind of cavalierly remain as you are? Or is that thing going to pull you there's now a different magnetic force working on your life. See, that magnetic uh, impulse that was dragging you down with those iron filings out of an old sin nature is now a new nature that is working through failures, weaknesses, and immaturities, but you are always being pulled up by the divine power of his life within you and the position you occupy with him, set your mind on things above. When you're struggling down here and you're thinking, well, I just did all those things, kick my dog, you know what? I don't drink, don't cuss, don't smoke, don't run, don't chew, don't run with those who do. And that's your claim to fame until you do drink and smoke and cuss and chew. No, 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 no. You set your mind on things above and you see not only Christ crucified, the snake on the pole, so that what is killing you died in him, you don't only keep looking at that until you live, but you also look at the victory beyond that to his place seated at the right hand of God. And in setting your mind on things above, everything that is good and noble and, and holy and true and pure and lovely, what you're seeing is you in that place, and that thing, that position you have is beckoning you. Come up here. Live like this. Experience this. It's an exact opposite magnetic force pulling on you. We have to press through the clutter and properly conceive of our true position in Christ. This dichotomy is the whole reason that Paul prayed in Ephesians 1, 17 to 19. I pray for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that I would be able to understand and see the hope of his calling, 
the riches of the glory of his inheritance in me. See, you've been given a DNA and a name and your future full conformity to Christ beckons your present mess to become like him. You are not here. You are in heavenly places. This is a multifaceted decree. Not only are we seated with Christ, but we are seated, seated amidst heavenly spectators who are being instructed in the wisdom of God through our lives. That's Ephesians 3.10. We're seated at a table in the midst of our enemies in Psalm 23. What's the song? I'm trying to remember it now. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It's all about getting a new perspective. It's all about your eyes being opened. It's all about the city of Dothan and the servant of the prophet who's so scared until his eyes are opened and he sees what's really there. And it was always really there. He just didn't see it. You have to start to see your heavenly position in Christ Jesus. And you have to stay seated because it's all in Him. You can't actually be seated apart from being in Christ. So stay in Him. Stay seated in Him. And the reason so that in the coming ages he could show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. In short, that means get over yourself. It's not about you anyway. He's this good because he's telling a story through your mess that's all about how good he is. And he's using your mess to prove it. You think, no, I got to get good enough to really show him, how worthy he is. He says, you got it all wrong. I'm so worthy, I'm going to show how good I am because I loved you while you were my enemy. I changed you into my nature. I gave you my name. I put my DNA inside you. And while you're still a mess, I'm still loving you. While you're falling, I'm catching you. Everything I'm doing has positioned you in me so that for all eternity, everyone knows I'm really that good. Get over yourself. Amen. Just keep falling in his direction. We sing the song, you are worthy of it all. Close the session with this. You're worthy of it all. We love that song. For from him are all things and to him are all things. You deserve the glory. And it's such a beautiful song because most of the time when we sing it, what we're really feeling is, I want to give you everything. I want to give you all my best. You're so worthy of all my best. I want to just turn it a little bit. No, yes, yes, yes. But that's not the end of the story. He's worthy of it all. He's worthy of your mess. He's that good. He can take your mess, take your coal, turn it into diamonds, turn it into glory. The only thing keeping you from that is the thing that makes you think you have to become something on your own before you can show how worthy he is. You show how worthy he is by trusting that your mess is exactly what he wants. Yeah. 